Hey everybody, welcome back. Tony again. Sorry it's taking me so long to get back to this video. I know everybody's wanting to see this black truck and what I call my 1980s upper middle class garage. It's been one hot, wet summer around here. and As you can see, I have a lot to mow. I mow clear up to the neighbors. I got all that over there. Clear down the road there. There's always something going on, but it's a nice, cool evening. So... Let's finish talking about this 1980s upper middle class garage. Uh, say it's 1989. The wife says, hey, you paid your 86 Ford truck off, so let's go get me a new car. So they buy this 89 town car, which if you go back in my videos, I think it's just a couple back. You can see where we talked about it. Um, I bought this truck New Year's Eve. 2002 with 35,000 original miles on it. I knew the original owner, chief of police right here in town, and I begged him for it. I wouldn't let him, I just wouldn't leave him alone until he sold it to me. At the time, everybody told me I paid too much, but I've been offered way more than that now. But, um, let's see, let's, I got some stuff laid out up here. Oh, I wanted to point out, too, if you go back and look at my Lincoln video, 1989 was the only year that they had amber marker lights in the town cars, too. I forgot to mention that. There, it's mentioned. Okay. This is a copy of the original title where he bought it through Ford Motor Credit. It had 10 miles on the odometer. He bought it... April 30th, 1986. It looks like he paid it off on February 13th, 1990. And this is a copy of my title. Showing here where I bought it. New Year's Eve, 2002. Um, this truck, when I bought it, did not have the factory tack. Let me see if I can get in here where there's no glare. This is the dealer brochure. The original 1986 Ford dealer brochure. When I bought this truck, it looked like this. It did not have the factory tack in the dash. And this is the radio it had, which I guess you would call an analog dial radio, the, the cheaper one. AM, FM. Uh, no cassette. And... It also had, well, I'll show you what it came with. It came with these horrible hubcaps right here. I wanted these. That's what it's got right now. I found them almost immediately back then. He had a set of aluminum wheels on it. And actually these same BF Goodrich tires were on it. Um... I didn't like those either. They were like, well, I guess you'd call like an aluminum American Racing centerline wheel. But they still weren't suitable for me. I wanted the originals. And he asked me if I wanted these. He still had the original wheels and hubcaps. And I'm like, no thanks. You can keep them. So, there's that radio that was in it right there. So... The truck did have pretty much everything else I wanted except not being four-wheel drive. And I did buy another 86 Ford at the same time, really just a few months before, because I was pretty sure I was going to get this. And I was always going to take this truck off of the frame and put it on a four-wheel drive frame and never got it done. It's certainly not necessary now that I'm older and wiser. Um, also, I want to point out, if you got the factory tack, you also got the trip meter. They came together in the instrument cluster. And... I also bought this new old stock tachometer, or, dang it, speedometer for this truck. And if you, anytime you got a service, what they call a replacement speedometer for these trucks, it had a red digit instead of a black one right there. And I rolled this thing up to 38,000 miles when I bought this and then never did change it. Now it's got, I think, 43. We'll see in a minute. So if I ever do go through with putting this in there, I'm going to have to change this again to whatever it's got on it now 
And I bought another new old stock tack too, just because I found one. So the tack and the trip meter, trip odometer, came together as an option. You didn't get one or the other. If you got one, you got both. But I have not yet put the trip odometer in. I probably will, and probably will do a video on it eventually. So let me get this thing out so we can look at it. Another thing I found out with these vehicles, you can put, you get rid of that stupid buzzer for the key, key warning and um, light on warning. And it's the exact same thing, plug and play. If you put a chime out of a Grand Marquis or a Crown Victoria or a town car in it. So that's what I do to all my 86 Ford trucks. I've got several of them. And another thing that always drove me nuts was Ford, for some reason, always made this switch your driver switch, and this one the passenger switch. And anybody, and my, including myself, was always rolling the wrong window down. So every one of these trucks that I've had, I've changed this to the driver's window, and this one to the passenger window, because it just seems freaking backwards. So I've done that to every 86 Ford truck that I've had. See here, it's got the factory tack, but yet it still has the original speedometer with 43,040 miles on it. I just never did switch that out. I have everything to do it, including the instrument cluster bezel, the you know the glass over it or plastic, and the button. I've, I've got everything to do it. I just haven't done it, but I will eventually. So let's get this thing out of here. You can tell by looking at the wood grain on the steering wheel that it's original miles. Usually this is completely wore off. No cracks in the dash. Here's the radio. I changed the radio, put the electronic one in it. When you do that, you also have to change the speaker harness. It won't plug in. It's different. It's the same as far as when it gets to the speakers. It's just different where the radio plugs into it. So it's just kind of like a, a T harness. It plugs into the back of the radio, goes to the driver's side, and goes to the passenger side. Just held in with little plastic clips. You got to change out that speaker harness if you put the electronic radio in here. So the truck was ordered with Tilt and Cruise. They came together. You couldn't get one or the other, just like the tack and the trip odometer. Tilt and Cruise came together. The truck did have that truck did have power windows and locks the only thing I added was the factory tack the electronic radio and the original style steel styled steel wheels I added the pinstripe I had it several years before I decided to do it because I, I thought it needed it because it was just too much black and I put it off and put it off because once you put that on there, you know, and it sits, if it's on there for a while, if you ever decide to take it off, you know, you're going to have marks there. So I couldn't decide and couldn't decide. And then I saw one in the junkyard with it one time when I was strolling through the junkyard and I thought, oh, yep, it's got to have one. It looks good. So I like it because it, you know, it's red, brings out the red and the XLT. Brings out the red and the lariat, well, plus the interior, but it's got red in the center caps. 
red and the beauty ring. So I think the pinstripe really sets it off. I can tell you that the paint on this truck is terrible from the factory. It looks great where we're standing right now, but if you get up close, if you just look at it, it's going to get a chip in it. A little nick here, nick there. The, the, the paint was just terrible in 1986. It was so thin and soft. But I will tell you it is all original paint on this truck, except this right front fender. When I bought it, right above this chrome here, well, what be between the chrome and the pinstripe, it looked like someone had keyed it. There was a big scratch right there. So I took the fender off of the truck and took it to the body shop and handed it to him. And I said, here, get rid make this scratch go away. And they looked up the paint code and I tell you what, they, they matched the orange peel and everything. No one would ever know that this fender was painted if I didn't tell them. That's what a perfect match it is. And really, I should have the hood done and the other fender because the simple fact that it's just got bug stain on it. It's probably not going to show up out here. It's not a very nice day. It's cloudy. But everything on the truck is original. The exhaust is original. A little tag fell off the catalytic converter in the garage floor with the Ford part numbers on it. And I've got it somewhere. I don't, I'm not sure where it's at now, but I've got it. It does have a hole in the muffler, making a little noise now. Original tailgate panel. See, when I bought this truck, it had a camper shell on it. And it was one of those camper shells that went all the way down and filled up where the tailgate was. And he put it on there when it was new. So this tailgate was up in his garage attic in the rafters, wrapped in cardboard. So it was never used. So it's, the tailgate's like new old stock, basically. The bumper has never had a ball on it. That's not been painted. It just simply has never had a ball on that bumper. Here's the inside. You hear that rattle in the tailgate? I'll tell you exactly what that is here in a second. I just want you to see the bed there. It's got a few scratches, but certainly never abused. All original paint. Now listen when I lift this up. You hear that? There's a mud dauber's nest in there because you could see where they had been going in and out of the tailgate handle. There was mud droppings everywhere. So I know that that mud dauber nest has come loose in there and it is rattling around. I know that's what that is. Look at the inside some more. These floor mats came out of a truck that my dad ordered in 96. He ordered a brand new 96 F-150 and back then, you know, they didn't come floor mats. You had to order them separate across from the Ford counter. So when he traded it in, he said, you want those floor mats? They ain't getting them. So I had to pay for them. I said, yeah, I'll take them. So they've been in this truck ever since. These trucks were absolutely freaking plush, like a Lincoln. The seats were soft, firm, beautiful material that flowed over into the door panels. It really, this is 85, 86, I'd say, is when they really started dressing up their interiors, making them look more like a, a car and giving you those comfort features. However, they did come up with power windows and locks, I believe, in 1981. And by 82, they did have a little, like a wood grain panel here. Fancy up the door panels a little bit, but this one here went over the top, I think. I was working at an Amoco station, pumping gas, changing tires, changing oil in 1986. My boss ordered one of these brand new. And another guy came in and we was always doing his oil changes. He had a brand new one too. They both had red interior like this too. So... There's the inside. 
does have delayed windshield wipers dual tanks has the clock and the date up here electronic I'm sure it's not right yeah because I just hooked the battery up earlier today I will tell you these dual tanks you have to use them that's the main problem with these dual tanks is people just use one tank or say the say the fuel pump or something goes out of one tank and they don't want to fix it they just let it set well it's got that switching valve on the frame under here that it switches the tanks by fuel pressure it's got little spring plungers in it and if you don't use them they get all gummed up and then that's your problem so if you've got two dual tanks you've got to use them switch them back and forth regularly this truck took first place at the all ford nationals in carlisle pennsylvania the first year that i bought it I drove it all the way out there, 700 and some miles one way. Still has, as far as I know, it still has every original belt and hose on it. There's a Motorcraft heater hose, E6TA part number. Motorcraft heater hoses, or this is a radiator hose, I'm not sure what I called it. Even this little hose has Motorcraft on it. This one has Motorcraft on it. The belts, I've got a picture somewhere of the belts where even the belts still have their Motorcraft and their part numbers on it. Everything works on the truck. I did have to replace the booster last year. That's probably the only problem I've had with it, I guess, is the brake booster was hissing at me. Under hood light still works. Still has the Ford part number on that map sensor back there. Yeah, I'll start it up for you. this muffler is pretty rusty it's gonna have to have something done with it soon it is the original one original catalytic converter I did put new shocks all the way around it last year Here's this Kansas City assembly plant built with Missouri pride, jointly dedicated to quality. Was not built in Dearborn. I do wish the sun was shining today. We're going to talk about this 68 Ford LTD we got sitting out here too, eventually. See, I got a lot of mowing back there. Let's take it down the road. That's another thing cool about this truck is most of these plastic seat belt things are toast. There's nothing left of them, and these are both still intact. The 
windows on these trucks were extremely fast. Especially compared to those 80s Chevys. My God, those things were terrible. Dodge trucks were okay. As far as windows. Door locks work. This truck really runs good too, it's peppy. Yeah, me and two of my buddies drove this thing all the way out there to Carlisle, Pennsylvania to the Ford Nationals. And I will tell you, trucks have come a long way since 1986. That wasn't the most comfortable thing, being capped up at, or cooped up in a regular cab pickup all that distance. But it's got a first place trophy to make it worth it, I guess, or plaque. This wood grain in here was 85 86 only but for some reason the 85 wood grain just faded to almost purple 86 didn't do that i don't know why but these all have 85 part numbers but they improved something by 86 for sure because anytime you get anything 85 it they, they faded to purple and they, they look terrible other than that 85 and 86 was the same interior We went the other way with the Lincoln. We'll take this route this time. Nice smooth ride at 75. But I'll back it off because it is 55 mile an hour out here. still works. It's been a long time since that was set. We're going to turn around right here. Sorry, I'm always getting my finger in front of that thing. It's not hard to do. I did have the windows tinted a little bit just to protect the door panels, even though it rarely sets out. Oh, let's see what it'll be. 20 years, I guess. This New Year's Eve that I've had it, and I've put 8,000 miles on it in 20 years. I did drive it to Chicago to pick up some car parts once.
down once. My boss ordered one of these things new and that other guy that used to come in the station and get his oil changes and that guy's still around too he's bought a new truck every year I don't know how many years but he's getting up there yep once I seen those I fell in love with these 86 Ford trucks and I had to have one I was 18 years old and it took a long time to get what I wanted but I've had several of them now I've got a lot of new old stock parts for these things. I've got new old stock wood grain. I've got the couple of horn pads in the package. I've got, I think the pasture side door panel. I've got tailgate panels. I've got trim, grills, headlight doors, grill moldings, clock, a lot of stuff. I don't know why, I just started buying all that stuff. I'm like, oh, you're going to have the trucks. If anything ever would happen to this one, I got it. I do have a thermostat for this truck because it's creeping up a little bit, and I'm sure it's the original one. So that's i got to put that in. I'm sure that's all it is. I was going to show you these door panels. Most of these door panels are usually completely rotted these are like new well that one's like new this one i don't know if you'll see it it's a little bit faded but there's no chalking or scratches or anything like you see on most of them again another clear sign that it's all original so there it is the 86 Ford F-150 that I've had going on 20 years. That sets in my, what I call my 1980s upper middle class garage. Let me know what you guys think of it down in the comments. It's not for sale at this time. I got a lot of that on the Lincoln. People wanting to know if it was for sale. It is not. I don't know how you would ever replace something like that. I suppose it'll stay the way it is until it, my nieces or nephews or somebody winds up with it. So. That's it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. And stay tuned for some other videos. We've got a, we've still got a 68 XL to talk about, and a 78 Grand Marquis, and a 68 Mercury Park Lane, maybe a Model T. So, and I'll keep trying to show you some power window and door lock repair and stuff. If I swap out this speedometer ever, if I ever get that done and put that triple odometer in there, I'll, heck, I'll show you how to do that, or even explain how you add the factory tack if you don't have it. Um, I can tell you the truck, uh, these trucks are extremely easy to add delayed windshield wipers to if you don't have it. I got a bunch of that stuff, so if I can find one that doesn't have it, but all of these trucks around here, every 86 Ford truck I've ever had has had delayed wipers. Maybe my nephews don't. We'll see about it. I'll show you how to change that out too, but stay tuned. Thanks for watching.
please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. See you next time. I go back and watch this video to make sure, you know, see what kind of mistakes and stuff I make on there. And I wanted to, I forgot I wanted to show you. I have all these books and everything that came with it too. The original owner's manual. I'm not even sure what this is. Oh, shit. Wade Ford Sales Incorporated, 3rd, and Washington Greenville, Illinois. Wade Ford, Sales ser or Service... Service Manager John Winters. Ford Quality Agreements, what that is. They say this is the little card that got put into a computer when it went down the assembly line with these things punched out to tell them which options to put on the truck. That's what I'm told that is. So I just wanted to show you I had all that stuff too. I also wanted to point out, <clears throat> I realized that I didn't tell you why the pollution pump belt was off, and that's because, I don't know, my dad has always been like, get that damn thing off there, it don't need to be turning another pulley, so I always take the belt off pollution pumps, and when I get exhaust put on it too, I'll probably lose the catalytic converter anyway, so I deleted that stuff on the Lincoln too. No need for that stuff around here. So just wanted to point them a few things out. Again, thanks for watching. Please subscribe.